With this knowledge you should be able to perform the next task. Animate four small picture-in-pictures in front of a looping background. The picture-in-pictures should start in each corner of the screen and run from one corner to next in, let's say, two seconds. Make it to be an endless loop. Please take your time again and try for yourself before continuing watching this video. To start this task, please create a background loop. As you already created a looping background, you can copy this container to the new location and maybe change the video clip and adjust the length of the container. Now choose the test pattern as going to be on layer 2 and scale it to the desired size. Then position it in the upper left corner. Please store all values to the sequence. After this first position, the image should move to the top right corner within 2 seconds. Therefore, please use plus plus 200. Adjust the X position and store it to the sequence. As the setup is central to the zero position, you can just invert X and Y position values to find identical corner positions. Move on plus 200, adjust the Y position and store the value as a key on the sequence. Now having a look at the playback, you will realize the image is doing a diagonal move. This is because on the second position is no Y key value. So the Y value will fade from first to third position. To avoid this diagonal movement, please copy via control mouse drag the Y key from the first position to the second position. Same applies to the X value for the third position of course. Now create 4th position. A 5th position is also needed to be able to realize an endless loop of the scene. The 5th position is identical to the 1st position. So, it is just copy and paste of the first position key values. Please create a play queue at the beginning of the scene and a jump queue at the last key position to jump back to the play queue. The playback should now show one image going from one corner to corner. After the movement is programmed, all you have to do is replicate the movement on three more layers. The most effective way is not program it again step by step but using the stored values again. To do so, please drag and drop the container from layer 2 to layer 3. Make sure the now pointer is correctly positioned on the first frame of the container on layer 2. Adjusting the keys on the correct position is critical. The second key value should be the first key value for layer 3. Third has to become second, and so on. To achieve this in short time and exact frame timing, please delete X and Y position keys of layer 3. After that, drag a selection box around all X and Y position keys left. 
drag those keys to the start of the container. The missing key values of the fifth position can be copied from the new first position key. Playing back the loop should now show two layers moving from corner to corner. Of course, you can change the image by another resource to identify different media. For layers 4 and 5, please repeat all steps from copying the container and always use the last edited container. Let's have a look at the final result. All four picture-in-pictures are running around endlessly. The next theme is the output setup. Different projects have different requirements and screen setups. To better implement these kinds of setups, Pandora's Box recommends the saying Make the virtual reality. This means the closer you can match your virtual setup inside Pandora's box to the real setup, the more intuitive it is to implement and program. In the Pandora's box 3D engine, virtual cameras are used to capture the environment for the output. This is done through the 3D camera frustums. Field of view and orientation determine which image or view of the 3D virtual world are captured and rendered. To control these cameras, they can be accessed from the camera device in the device tree. The individual parameters can all be controlled live. For example, I have a setup with a dual server and side-by-side -side screens. The left screen is attached to output 1 and the right screen attached to output 2. By default camera 1 and 2 feed their textures to their corresponding output 1 and 2. To make the virtual world match exactly to the real world, the cameras have to be positioned precisely inside of Pandora's box. This means for there to be no errors with the alignment. Each camera must be placed exactly. This means too that the bezels for the monitors needs to be considered and added to the camera positions. For example, should a diagonal line pass between the two screens, it must form one continuous line and not to be broken by the gap in the bezels of the aligned screens. For the next 2D setup example, place this test pattern as a texture on a layer. To achieve the correct result, the X offset parameter of the camera has to be manipulated. This is a preferred workflow for a 2D setup, because the cameras can stay in the same viewpoint position. Pixel values for the offset can be calculated as the pivot point and cameras are set to the middle of the used object. Therefore, the X offset of camera 1 is the resolution of the monitor divided by 2, plus the pixel value of the screen bezel. That is how one calculates the X offset. And because it is the left screen, you have to make this value positive as it is moving to the left. This calculation can be entered directly in the X offset parameter field. For the right or second camera, the value used for camera 1 can be inverted to a negative value and applied to the same parameter.
Should you wish to align cameras by eye, this can be done using the align function in Pandora's box. To do it this way, both cameras must be simultaneously selected using Windows shortcuts and then the alignment from center option must be selected. Then from the device control tab, using the X offset, the two cameras can be simultaneously aligned from the center point outwards. Projection setups with soft edge blending can also be set up in this manner. The camera frostums in Pandora's box align nicely with the light path of the projectors. After accurate calculation of the overlap, the pixel value can be applied to the camera's X offset parameter. All these values are live values, like all parameter values in Pandora's box. They are stored as key values on the sequence as well. Using the preview it is possible to precisely see the result of the rendered outputs of any of the clients. The client is highlighted in blue when the preview is activated. This image corresponds exactly to the one in the client's render output. It is also possible to generate multiple views to view both outputs and the composition view at the same time. Now let's look at the output settings. Keystone and Soft Edge. The Keystone function is being used when no optimal angle is set from the projector's position to the screen. You can find the Keystone parameters in the output. Select the related output in Devices and open the Device Control tab. Here you find the parameter for the left, right, top and bottom side and also the linearity for X and Y. Each edge of the output image can be adjusted in position and rotation to counter projection distortion. Linearity will balance the nonlinear compression of the image when projecting out of 90 degrees angle. All these values are live values, like all parameter values in Pandora's box. They can be stored as key values on the sequence as well. The created output and camera container have a default length of 10 seconds, but the show will probably be much longer. That means the container duration has to match the length of your entire show. You can set this value in the Inspector tab. Therefore, select the container, enter a new length and press Enter. The length of the container has been changed now. A second way is to select the end of the container with a left click and drag the end line to the right direction. Both ways have the same result, but entering a specific time is far more precise and therefore recommended. If you have more questions or in case you need help in Pandora's Box, then our Pandora's Box support team would be happy to assist you. Please have a look into the huge help file as a first step. It is available with every Pandora's Box installation and you can find it online. There's a user forum available 
administered by our support team. There is email support and direct phone support. Advanced trainings are also available as live trainings in Cologne, Germany and other locations in the world. Please have a look on our webpage to find out schedule and locations.